So the next thing is, is how do you actually get to that state? How do you actually realize what you're doing and, and what are the steps to do it? Years ago, I went on a course and it was all to do with visualization. Now, some would call that reverse engineering. So the trick is, is you imagine what the end game looks like, what the end result is. So it could be a blog post going up. It could be a video that's being done. It could be an interior design project safely installed, sorted, and you shaking hands with a client and sailing out the door and shutting the door behind you isn't life wonderful. So if you imagine that's the end game, you now need to work back. Um, through that from the end game all the way back to the beginning and putting in all the steps and at that point you should have a blueprint for how you're actually going to be doing any job that visualization strategy if you like has helped me enormously over the years I didn't even know it was going to make any kind of a difference so if you've got some sort of project to do uh, whether it's large or small a full interior design project or just a, you can break them down into mini sections as well I would imagine the end game what do you want the end game to look like um, you know is it a blog post um, on a uh, computer, is it up on a, on a social media platform, is it a video um, up on YouTube um, or is it a project or do you just need to get a particular project done? What needs to happen? What is that end game? And then write that end game down and then work down all the steps. What would happen the, before that? What is the next state that would happen before that and the one before that? And soon you'll have all of the steps um, in order, um, which is quite shocking. Um, of what you have to do and then you can just literally carry it out. This, as I said, does apply to obviously interior design projects as well. So if you do, rem if you do think of yourself as that girl um, or boy um, going out that door um, and shutting the door after shaking hands with the clients, if that is your end game, what happens before that? Well, the obvious thing is obviously the client comes in and has a look around. So you need to have some kind of a point where the client comes in, you see them and you show them around and explain whatever you need to explain. Um, but when the client isn't there, what happens before that? Well, you're running around titivating, putting all perhaps accessories out and straightening up um, the curtains and furniture and all that sort of thing. That's the next bit. And then what's the next bit after that? Well, the furniture's got to come in. So you've um, see so the furniture arrives. What happens before that? Well, the delivery company has to pick it up. So you have to write down every single little bit that is going to happen. And then you can see, if you like, the enormity of the project of what, of how everything needs to go, whether it's the flooring going in to the curtains going up, that means at some point the curtains have to be ordered. And before that, the fabric has to be thought about and decided upon. There is, ho is a whole level, um, if you like, of ways of looking at this, but this is the simplest way of looking at it as just putting every little bit in order. You can swap things around um, and things won't always go true to form, uh, but it's a very good way of actually seeing uh, the breadth and depth of a project before you even start. Now, of course, the excellent thing about this is um, it's that all of this sort of all of these different items can be put into a diary and you can diarize. And this is one of the best things. You will need a diary. I still use my old um, trusty file of facts, um, uh, which is perfect for me. Um, lots of people do things electronically. Please feel free to do that um, if that's your thing, if you're younger. Um, but I still use uh, my diary and it is, you can't really sort of see it here, um, but it is, it's a week to a view. And that week to a view means everything is, it's time so I can see when things are coming in and out. But it actually has um, a whole list of other different things which are dotted around each different thing, but at least it's in a calendar format. So I can turn over the page and say what's happening next week and everything is there at a glance. Um, you could do this for each individual project that you're doing, but when you're starting out, or actually even when you get going with things, the larger projects that you will do, um, the less amount of projects that you will want to take on uh, because these things are all encompassing. So in order to be productive, I would definitely say get something written down because actually sometimes it's better to actually have a look at things. You won't be able to see things um, really on, on a big screen unless you're taking around your laptop um, or an iPad everywhere um, and so you could print stuff out that's another way to do it of course but I actually prefer uh, pencil and paper um, and I do use pencil rather than a pen um, just so I can rub stuff out um, and make adjustments as I go along. Now sometimes you can actually be a little bit overzealous with this so you get your diary and you think right I'm going to fit everything in I've written I've visualized how it's going to be and I'm going to fit everything in um, and some things will go by the wayside and this is when you can see different projects starting to move and slip. This will happen and you can't worry about it um, because it will happen set at the beginning and it still happens to this day because you have all the um, other exterior factors which come in and muck up your entire beautiful schedule um, that you've produced in order to make yourself productive and run the whole project on time. Um, so I would absolutely say 
um, give you again catch yourself some slack and realize that even when you do put this in place it can be overwhelming even if you like for your diary to contain you'll see it all and it can be frightening to look at um, but take it one or two weeks at a time and you should be fine now getting out of the house um, can often be seen as not being productive whatsoever after all um, how are you being productive if you're going to a trade show or something of, of that ilk um, well, I think you're going to have to get used to going out of the house for a start off. Um, you will be getting used to traveling around to uh, different properties, to different suppliers, uh, back and forth to home. Um, all these sorts of um, things will, ha you know, will come up during the, the course of a working week, shall we say. And you're just going to have to sort of incorporate that um, into your life. What I would say is that if you are going off to a client, say, on a Tuesday morning to go and visit them at their home, that I would, if you need to go out, I would utilize that Tuesday afternoon so that you are out and going off somewhere as well. So utilize that entire Tuesday to be out of the office. You don't have to rush back. Um, you're already out, you're traveling around um, and you get everything done out of the house, which means that, shall we say, on the Wednesday, the day after, you can actually get some work done at your home. Try not to be as bitty because often half the time can be taken up with uh, traveling. And although that we still have our mobile phones in this day and age that we can work from, it sometimes isn't enough. Um, and sometimes other people are doing other things. People are listening to podcasts. Uh, people are... Uh, you know, are sort of on the phone, they're texting different people, they're catching up with friends, they're on Facebook, probably, something like this. Um, and you do need some downtime. But I think if you're going to be productive at all, then at least if you've got a couple of things that you need to do outside the house, try and put, fit them and put them both on the same day. So I hope that's been a little bit helpful to uh, tell you exactly what I do, what I have done, what's worked and what hasn't worked in the past. I'm still learning. Um, you will evolve as you go through and as you learn to be a business person um, and a designer as well. Um, and the two things are actually quite different in some ways, um, but there are lots of overlaps with just general business and interior design. But they all have the, um, the thing in common that you do need to be productive in what you're doing, whether that's growing an online business and your whole side of things there, uh, promoting yourself um, as a designer, or whether you're actually actually getting the work done, you're actually putting the projects in, in progress. Um, and in order for that, you need to be productive. I'm hoping that this will help you a little bit. If you have any comments or any questions um, or anything that you think that you want to be added on or you want me to ask uh, anything about, then write them in the comments down below um, and I will speak to you soon. Happy designing.